Good afternoon, it's Kyle Lutaz from UTAS here, and I'm here to give you a short presentation on admissions. So what that is, is our admissions team at the University of Tasmania, processed through applications, right through to the enrolment process. And I'm going to give you a short snippet of how we do that. The biggest thing that comes around the admissions time, uh, especially when it comes to accepting the offer, is general questions around meeting conditions. So can I accept? When can I accept? Or how can I accept? Um, and what we look at is one, if you've met all the conditions of your offer. So if you're applying directly, remember to check your letter of offer before accepting to ensure that you've met all acceptance conditions. Conditions can be anything from, have you submitted your academic transcript? Have you supplied your IELTS or your English condition? Um, have you paid your fees? Um, right through to a number of different conditions and this will all be uh, labelled on the offer letter so it's easy for you to understand. And then if you do have any questions on any of the conditions on your offer letter, you will be in contact with an international recruitment officer who will actually talk you through your offer letter as well and be able to help you answer any, con any conditions that you do have or any questions that you have on top of that. So if you have an agent as well, and you have offer and you have conditions on your offer letter, you may contact your agent at any time and ask them questions on the condition, as well as how can you remove that condition? How can you work towards accepting the offer? And is there any further assistance available for any of the condi conditions that you do have? One of the biggest things that I will um, real highlight in this is that there is always going to be a number of different support avenues there throughout your whole process. As soon as you apply, whether it's not as direct or through an agent, you will have someone with you hand-holding you through that whole process, talking you through your offer letter, your conditions and how to accept. So don't feel that you're doing this alone. When we look at the offer letter and going through, and once we've finished, finished or finalised all the uh, conditions on your offer letter, you'll come to a situation where you're asking the question, am I going to accept? When am I going to accept? And when do I start? So when we look at how to accept your offer letter, there's a few things that you can do. When you're a direct student and you're applying directly from the website, you can log into your application portal where you've made your application. And what you can do is under the My Application tab, you'll see the list of the applications that you've made. And if you've made different applications, but you've only been given an offer for say one, uh, you'll be able to see on the status of those, uh, which one is currently in play and which one's active. Um, on top of that, you'll see any there that are listed as incomplete. So if you've got an incomplete offer, unfortunately you won't be able to accept that or even action until you've completely um, submitted that uh, application. Um, once you've gone through your application portal, you've got a list of your applications and you're looking to accept, what you want to do is click the actions and then what you'll have there is respond to offer. You can click accept offer, uh, reject offer, there's a number of different avenues and, and directions that you can go but I would highly push you in the direction of accepting that offer because studying at the University of Tasmania is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So please, if you have a current offer with the University of Tasmania, please accept. And once you've filled in the required information and uploaded your acceptance form, so that's signing the acceptance of a letter, uh, it's updating your details, anything like that. Once you've completed that and paid your fees, uh, we can send out that COE for you and you've then formally accepted your offer. Um, if you're with an agent, the agent will do this for you right through the process. They'll be able to help you accept your offer, uh, issue the COE, everything like that, the agent will help you in that process. How do you pay your fees? So this is a great one. So once you've accepted the offer, signed the offer letter, and you're still asking the question, I haven't received my COE, uh, I've not yet received my username and password, am I actually accepted? Well, that's great questions. 
And to know if you've done that, the first step is to make sure that you've paid your fees. So again, there's two avenues. If you're a direct student, you can pay your fees uh, through the e-student application form. It'll tell you to go and through that acceptance process, how to pay your fees. Uh, if you're going through that e-student application, trying to accept, and it's not allowing you to pay anything like that, or if you have any uh, reservations about paying through our partner, the Western Union, you can actually request the University of Tasmania's payment details, and we can send that through to you, and you can pay directly to the university website, uh, university account. Um, keeping in mind, once you pay your fees, we will require a, a receipt. So the only way that we're able to cross-check payments and release the COE is if we have that receipt so we can cross-check that payment. Um, if, you're paying, if you're paying through an agent or, or accepting through an agent, the agent will talk you through that process. Uh, please be careful when giving any money to any outside party other than the University of Tasmania. You want to make sure that your money is getting into safe hands. So please cross-check with your agent, make sure that you're paying directly to the university, either through the Western Union or through our direct debit, direct account. Um, but if you have third parties coming to you asking for money and looking to transfer that money for you, please ask the questions, uh, make sure that they're a third party approved provider. Um, if they're not, please be careful giving money to anyone that you don't know. Um, if you're paying outstanding fees, so if you're a current commencing student, um, you've finished semester one going into semester two or vice versa, as soon as you enrol into your next subjects, so that will be the next semester subjects, you will then be generated an invoice and that will be available for you through your e students as well. So you'll be able to generate your invoice and what you'll be able to do then is see the amount of money that you have to pay for those units Please note that this will generally be around week two of classes leading up to census date. And you'll have a number of emails and correspondence to you with anything that you still have to owe and why you owe it. And again, if you have any questions at any time around the money that you owe, who you're paying it to or why you're paying it, please ask the question. You'll have a number of different support avenues available to you whether or not it's the International Recruitment Officer that's been helping you through the whole pipeline, your agent that's been helping you since the application, or it could just be anyone from the university. We're more than happy to help you through this student journey. Another question that we get when looking through accepting the offer or going through the admission process is, is the important dates. So when do I need to accept by? When do I need to pay my fees? When does classes begin? When's orientation date? When will I receive the information? There's a lot of new questions coming to mind as you're a new student or commencing student and you're about to journey into this new adventure. So please, again, ask the question, but I've got a few important details and, and dates here for you. So accepting your offer. As classes start on the 13th of July and you're not required to travel due to the current restrictions, you'll be transitioning to our online state. So what that means is all your classes will be delivered online to you. So in order to um, accept your offer and be in your classes for start date, we'd really like you to accept your offer before the 12th of July. What that means is it gives us enough time to accept you, admit you into your class and have you enrolled into your classes before the start date so you know exactly what you're studying for that semester, what units, and you're familiar with the platform such as Milo. Semester two orientation date. So currently we, we're on an orientation session at the moment, which runs for two days, but the university is also running an orientation session on the 6th of July for any new and commencing students. Um, what this will give you is pretty much the same information that you'll find today and tomorrow, accommodation options, um, current student um, support. Uh, you'll look at um, an introduction into your courses maybe, depending if you've enrolled, and a number of different support avenues available. So if you do miss or, or want to reinteract or want to refresh your knowledge or on the orientation sessions, 
please attend the 6th of July. Um, and more information will be released shortly. Semester two start date. As I mentioned there, it's the 13th of July. Um, week one will be primarily looking at introduction to the units that you're doing, a basic breakdown of where you'll need to go, what you'll need to study throughout the semester, how your exams are going to be worked out, and a number of different um, admin type support there available for the units that you're enrolled into. So it's really important that you attend week one because coming into week two, you might have an assessment that's already due. So please, if you've still got an offer letter that hasn't been accepted, please do so. Or if you have accepted your offer, make sure that you're enrolled into your units leading up. Which brings us to our next segment, how to enrol into your units. Now, this is one of the most difficult, um, difficult um, areas that you'll be involved in within the university. Reason why it's so difficult is because each course will have a direct timeline in terms of what units that you need to enrol into and when. And then you might get additional units on top of that, such as your um, selected units that you do based on your, your course preference or course knowledge, um, as well as even um, looking at breadth units um, or even introduction units. So please, if you have any questions on what units to enrol to, into, we have a specialised service called Uconnect, and that's our, our main service like student support, international student advisors, everywhere that you need um, at one stop shop. So Uconnect will be able to help you with your enrolment process. So what units do I need to enrol into? When do I need to enrol into them? And a number of different questions can be answered but you won't be able to enrol until you've received your username and password. Now, I'm just going to go into a short detail of, of how we actually admit students. So then you know exactly where you are once you've accepted your offer. So what will happen is you accept your offer, you've paid your fees, you may be given a COE based on the request, depending on the current situation of the coronavirus um, or COVID-19. So what will happen is once we've formally approved you as accepting the offer and we can see the COE has been given or we've received the funds, what we'll do is we'll actually have a look and admit you into the course that you've applied and accepted for. So we go through the back end of the system, we tick your name off and we put you and make sure that those units that are available in that course are revealed on your eStudent um, pipeline so you'll be able to actually see the whole breakdown of what units you need to do and accomplish and pass throughout your student journey. Now once those have been admitted and been revealed to you that's when your username and password will be sent to you. This generally takes 24 to 48 hours before you get your username and password and it will be sent to the email that you've applied for and supplied to us through that student journey in terms of right through from offered to accept and even now through the enrolment process. So it's really important that if you're applying directly from the website, you're supplying valid email addresses. If you're applying through an agent, you're supplying your email address and not your agent's email address. Because if you can imagine if your agent's supplying all his or, his or her email addresses for their students, they're all going to get an email and it's going to be an invalid one because we cannot issue that username and password if it's a, a duplicate email address. So please make sure that you're issuing your, your, username, your email address to us and it's valid so we can look into that. So census date. Another question that comes up quite often is what is census date and when is census date? So census date for international students is the last day for any students can apply to withdraw from any unit without financial penalty or academic penalty. So please note that students deposit payments are subject to the refund policy as well. So if you're looking to uh, withdraw from your course, please make sure that you're doing this before the census date. Reason being is if you withdraw from your course after census date, what happens is you can then lose 
all that deposit, all the money that you've paid to the university because you've left it so long and you've actually engaged and started working on the, of the units. So once it gets past census date, you're a current student and you're, walking, you're working towards these goals of successfully passing. Um, the census date is the 10th of August 2020 for semester two 2020. Um, and please note that due to COVID-19, some changes were made to census dates in deadlines in semester one. So if there are any continuing students here, please note that that may be revisited for semester two, but because everything's been online, it most likely will not. And for more general information, um, we will send a link on the FAQ page around census date and other things like that. Um, now, another thing that I really wanna highlight to all our new students, again, is the fact that there is going to be a number of different support avenues here to you from an admissions point. So what we'll do is we'll look at helping you through the student journey, whether or not you need assistance with accepting your offer, whether or not you have a condition that needs to be removed, anything like that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us because we'll be able to assist you through any issues that you may have or any problems that may be around, uh, arising. So please don't hesitate to get in touch because we will not know if a problem is happening or an occurrence is, is going through without actually that communication. We need to know so we can help you. So as Jerry Maguire once said, help me help you. And if you don't know who Jerry Maguire is, please watch the movie. It's a cracker. So thank you for taking the time and listening to me talk through the admission process from offer accept right through to admitting and enrolled. Um, what I'll do now is we'll go into some Q&A so I'll bring up some questions, answer any questions, but please note if you've got anything that's specific to you, a lot of the time we will not be able to share a lot of personal information out on this chat. So we may have to contact you outside of the Q&A um, because we don't wanna share important details with, with everyone. Or it might be an extenuating circumstance with your case that may needs to be looked at. So we might not be able to solve it here for you now. Um, let me just have a look at my little question box. Thanks so much, Kyle. I can help you with that if you like. So I've already um, picked up a few questions for you to ask live to the audience. Um, Lovely. For thank any you, of you so much for know, this fantastic this is Mona. presentation. Um, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right, Mona. Um, hopefully I answered a lot of people's queries in regards to the offer to accept process from an admissions point of view. But again, if you've got any questions, please ask away. I've got Mona on the line. She'll be more than happy to help us throughout the, this process. Awesome. So the audience can start popping in their questions if they like, but I've got a couple here already, Carl. So the first one is, I know you've already covered it, but uh, someone's asking, what is the deadline for enrolling for course units? Yeah, definitely. So the deadline will be that first week. So car, 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 sorry, courses start and classes start on the 13th of July. So if you're not enrolled into your classes on the 13th or 14th, you will miss a couple of days. So it's important that you accept your offer before the 13th of July so we can admit you and then walk, work through the enrollment process. But 13th of July is course start date. So please be enrolled by then. Awesome. And we've got a question here from Chelsea. So. The question is, is it competitive to enrol in your required units? Um, she knows that each course requires specific units to graduate, but how do we make sure that we're able to enrol when there are so many students needing to say, take the same course? I guess um, what the question is, you know, if you could clarify on how many units students have to enrol in and in terms of quoted courses, et cetera. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks for that. And I believe it was Chelsea. Um, so. A lot of the time, the university will not restrict enrolment to a number of different units or courses. Now, there may be restricted courses, and a lot of the time there are health courses, so your nursing, um, your medicine, that will be highly restricted in terms of the number of students that we can accept and enrol into that course. But a large majority, so 95% of our courses are not restricted, 
So students can accept enrol and depending on what, ed, what entrance level they're at, whether it be semester one, semester two, the units should be available and will be available for international students to enrol into with no restrictions um, or, or no caps or quotas. Um, it's important to know that international students are required to enrol into a full-time subject load. So that's around three to four units per semester. Now, if you're going into a master's program, you're only doing two years um, full-time study. In your bachelor program, it could be three to four years, depending on what program you're going into. So it's really important that if you're unsure of what units to enrol into, at that full time load, you can talk to an international student recruitment officer or you can talk to Uconnect or even the college itself. So you can talk to academics to actually um, plan that path of what, what units you need to enrol into. But that's a great question because it is, it is a lot of the time. Um, students are either scared or confused or, oh, if I don't enrol quickly, I won't be able to do my course. And, and that's completely wrong. So you will have the time to enrol and we will not restrict those unless it's a capped course. But once you've accepted the offer for a capped course and we've actually sent you the admitted details, that means you've cemented your place within the university. Thanks Great Kyle. Question. We've got a question here. Um, will the orientation on July 6 be online or on campus? It's going to be online. Um, so at this stage, we're not um, approved for any on-campus face-to-face activity within the University of Tasmania. We're taking health of our students and our staff very seriously. Um, so what we're doing is we're putting it all online so students and teachers, as well as academics, um, can feel safe, can give that information. Um, and online also works better, you know, you can jump online, you can attend the sessions that you want and need to attend. Um, without leaving the comfort of your own home. So it's perfect. So please attend. It's, we don't tend to say it's compulsory, but we put it into the situation that if you miss important information or miss important details about your course and you're attending week one, week two online and something gets brought up that you're not quite aware of, it can throw you completely out. So please attend orientation get the information to best set you up for success. It's really important that you attend. Awesome, thanks Kyle. Um, I've got another question. Can you just clarify on the full refund policy we have? So we have a question saying, do we get a full refund if we do not get our visa after they've started their online study for semester two? Yeah, definitely. So the refund policy will be available to all students and agents um, on our website. But for students that accept their offer and withdraw before the census date or before they even start their class, you will be entitled to a, a full refund. Um, and we can go through that process um, if you want to call through or anything like that. We can go through it case by case, no issue at all. Um, if you start your course online and it's something that you're not really interested in or it's something that you, you're not really comfortable even if it's the online module or it's not what you thought it's, it was that you wanted to, to study, we'll have that conversation and you can withdraw from your course uh, or you can request to withdraw from your course and we'll actually talk you through that process. So at any stage, if you stand to lose any of the money that you've deposited, we will let you know that in advance and we will tell you, if you withdraw now, you'll lose this percent um, do you still want it to continue? Um, but please know all of it will be communicated to you. Uh, if you withdraw before your classes begin, full refund. If you withdraw before census date, full refund. If you withdraw after the census date, that's when we talk about that option of losing the percentage of the deposit that you put through. And that's a really good point. So I guess to the audience, uh, to the students, your census date is really important. So any decisions you make up until that date, um, yeah, will be full refund. Carl, I've got a question here from Larissa. Um, she's saying she's received her COE, which I'm sure a lot of our students who are here may have the same question. Um, yep. She hasn't applied for her visa yet, but she's saying 
should she start applying for her visa now or does she have to wait until borders open? Um, so I guess um, a bit of a discussion around that. Yeah, definitely. So this is generally um, left to the actual student. So if you feel comfortable and you want to apply for the visa, please do so. No one is stopping you from applying for your visa. Even if you want to start early, get that process moving, that's fine. But if you don't want to apply for your visa, you want to study with us and then as soon as restrictions are lifted and international travel or interstate travel is available, you can then apply for your visa at that point as well. But please know, depending on where you are in the world, will depend on visa application time and process time. So imagine if you've got 10 students, they all apply on day one, as soon as courses are available, then it's going to take that time for the process to be um, complete. So it may draw out your ability to get on campus in time of which you wish. If you apply that process now, it gives you plenty of time to have that visa available to you. So students preference, um, but please don't leave it last minute where the availability and the process time may impact your ability to, uh, to attend on campus and um, study. Thanks, Carl. Um, we're getting a lot of questions coming in, so I might just keep going. Um, yeah, definitely. How many days, um, well, this is more about late arrivals. So the question is, I guess, how late can they join as soon as the um, 13th of July starts, which is our start date? So maybe a little bit of information about the late arrival process. Yeah, definitely. So late arrival process was set up around the visa application time. So if students accepted the offer and they hadn't received their visa in time, what the university would look at is accommodating that option of being, okay, well, the student's not going to be here for week one. When is the last day that we can actually accept students to attend their classes and not be too far behind, be set up for failure due to missing assignments and stuff like that? So a lot of the time, the restriction is at the end of week one. So classes start on the 13th. I believe it's the 19th, um, off the top of my head, 19th or 20th. Um, let me just have a look at my pretty little calendar here. So the 13th, 17th, I was completely off. So the 17th, so Friday the 17th of July will generally be the last day that we accept students to enrol into their classes. So that means you have that full week um, to accept your offer. You'll miss week one. As I said, it's mainly a lot of that admin side, but if you accept and enrol after that, a lot of the time you've got an assignment due the next day um, and you're enrolled in four classes. So that's four assignments to do in 24, 48 hours. Um, they could be worth anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. So we really strongly urge that nobody accept their offer and enrol after the 17th of July. If you do, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to study. We may have to have that conversation with you that we defer you to the next intake, which will be February 2021. So it's important that if you are intending to study at the University of Tasmania for semester two, please accept and enrol before the 13th so we can you can attend week one and set yourself up for success. But great question. A lot of students do ask that question on when is the last day I can actually attend my subjects. Great question. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so we've got almost similar questions here, but Basically, can you just clarify again with students, because it's an online study for semester two, how many units they have to enrol for the semester and in terms of payment for deposit as well? Yeah, definitely. So it is a general question. Um, how many units do I have to enrol into if I'm based online? So again, with international students, you will be required to enrol into a full time study load. Now, the reason why we keep this up and, and even though you're doing it online, the reason why we, we strongly urge you to enrol into that full-time study load is because it continues the duration of that course. So imagine if you roll, enrol into one to two units each semester, soon your course start duration will go from two years to three years to four years. And, and that pushes that duration out 
as well as if you apply for that visa based on the COE, which is a two year visa if you're doing a master's program or a three to four year visa based on an undergrad program. If you're continually extending your COE, extending your course start um, end date, extending that visa, you run in the risk of a possible visa refusal or a rejection of a visa extension. So it's really important that international students maintain that full-time study load. If you think that four units is too much, it's okay to study three. Three units is still full-time and it's still a lot of work. You're looking at around 15 to 20 hours per unit um, per week. So if you extend them, um, three units, absolutely perfect. I did a lot of my university study three units. It allowed me to work part-time, um, keep up my sporting responsibilities and a number of different things as well. So um, please enrol into three to four units per study uh, per semester. Awesome. And um, I guess, um, you know, just to clarify to students, um, your first deposit is your first payment for your semester. So any payments made after that is on a per semester basis. So we've got a few questions here on that. Um, I've got another question here from Sumya. Um, what if one cannot meet the conditions in order to accept the offer letter due to some current situations related to COVID-19? Maybe about the deferral process, Carl? Yeah, that, that is a great question. If you've got things around your academic um, transcripts or anything from a previous exam or test that you've done to show that you've passed your subjects or anything like that, or even a, a test that you may need to show um, a result, um, what will happen is if you're unable to supply those to the university in the deadline, so before July 13th, what we'll do is we'll have that conversation with you um, and that's where one of the international recruitment officers will call you personally and we'll have that conversation with you through the deferral process. So what that is, is just extending that offer letter and deferring it to the next available intake. So a lot of the time, if you can't meet semester two, it will be available for semester one. So that's February, 2021. Um, and that gives you plenty of opportunities to make sure that you meet all, the, all of those conditions um, and gives you enough time to set yourself up for success as well. Instead of trying to rush to get over the line, it, it's sometimes great to just have that little bit of breather, a little bit of a couple of months in advance to get yourself prepared. So don't stress if you can't, excuse me, don't stress if you can't meet the deadlines of a lot of your conditions, we'll work through that with you one-on-one. -on -one and get you to the next available intake. Thanks, Kyle. Um, there's a question about international student advisors, but I will say that we have a session tomorrow from 1 p.m. Um, Australian Standard Easter time where you'll hear about our international student advisors. But Kyle, maybe you, if you could just let the audience know um, how students can speak to an international student advisor if they wish. Yeah, definitely. And for those of, you don't, those of you that don't know what an international student advisor is, so an international student advisor is, is your support network. So they'll be able to help you with um, legal questions, uh, financial questions, academic questions. They're your first point of call as an international student once you commence your studies at the University of Tasmania. They're going to be your lifeline. So they're going to be there to be able to support you in any questions or concerns that you have. Um, and it's really simple and easy to talk to an international student advisor. There's two ways of going about it. If you're on campus, um, touch wood when we're available, um, they're at the ground level of the Morris Miller Library for those in Hobart. Or if you're in Launceston, go to the front desk of the library ask for an international student advisor. Um, there are drop-in sessions, but a lot of the time you have to make that appointment. And it's really simple to make an appointment. You just jump on our website, you can search function international student advisors, and then it's pretty much the first point of call. You click on it and you'll say book a request or book a meeting or one-on-one -on -one with an international student um, advisor. And you'll able to sit down with them Appointments go from anywhere from half an hour to an hour, even longer, where you're able to talk through any issues or concerns that you do have. Um, please note as well that an international student recruitment officer um, who helped you through the application pipeline, offer, accept, enrolled, will also be available to assist you 
in meeting up with an international student advisor. But like Mona has said, we've got a session with them tomorrow um, and you'll also hear more from them on July 6th um, and then during that orientation session that's available. But have a search on our website, International Student Advisors. If they're there for you, they will be. If not, International Student Recruitment Officer will be able to assist you, but there's a number of different support networks available at the university to help you through your student journey. Again, you are not alone. You don't have to go through this alone. We are here to help. Ask the question, because if we don't know, we can't help you. So great question Thanks. and thank you for that. Thanks, Kyle. Um, we do have a little bit of time left, but if we don't have any questions coming through, we'll end it sooner. But feel free to pop in questions um, as they come. But Kyle, um, I had a question before about online study. So there was a question before asking, you know, if students start semester two this year um, online, yes. what will happen after that semester one? So do they go back on campus or do they continue studying online, et cetera? Yeah, definitely. And, th and that's a great question. Um, the university has worked tirelessly trying to come together with a plan to best accommodate students through this situation. Um, so at the moment, the available courses will be all online. Um, and then once the restrictions have lifted, the university has a three step plan in place to start transitioning students on campus. So it's not going to be once restrictions are lifted, everyone's available to come on campus. What we're going to do is a slow rollout process. So what that means is we're going to bring cohorts in almost one at a time um, to help measure and restrict any further outbreak. Um, and then what will happen is once everything's clear, everyone will be allowed on campus at one time um, and students can then commence their study past semester one, semester two, whatever it is on campus. Uh, if you continue to still want to study online, there's nothing wrong with that. If the course is available to continue to study online, we will make that or we'll ask that question to make that available for you. Um, if not, if it's only campus-based, we'll work through that process of transitioning you on campus to online, on, online to on-campus study. Um, but it generally won't be um, kind of in this next semester. Um, I can't confirm anything as of yet of when students will be available um, to come on campus. Um, international travel is still restricted, interstate travel is still restricted. Um, so if you go into this semester with the idea that you'll be studying online, um, that will set you up for a lot of success. So, um, and any questions and support around that, we're definitely here to help. Thanks, Kyle. Um, I've got maybe I'll put one last question um, before we wrap it up because we're not getting really many questions come through. So um, student was asking um, how do students connect to, well, how do international students coming into Tasmania can connect with other people? So, I'll, you know, I can briefly say that we do have a Tasmanian University Union session happening today at 3 p.m. Um, feel free to pop on that one if you want to know more information about um, you know, our clubs and societies available for students and how they can get in contact with them. Um, but Kyle, yeah, I'll just leave it at that if you want to add anything more to that question about connections for international students. Yeah, definitely. And, and this isn't just an international student um, question as well. This goes to domestic students, on-campus students. It goes right across the board. How do people engage with the community? How do people engage with each other? Um, and the University of Tasmania is very active in making sure that students feel at home and supported throughout their journey. Um, with the online study, um, I was lucky enough to do two to three years of online study. Um, so when you're engaging with people within your online classroom, so that's either gonna be through your online chat function, through your Milo, or it's gonna be through group work or anything like that, it's really important that you put yourself out there. You ask the questions, you talk to one another, you, you, you don't tend to meet up, but you can create Zoom sessions as a group. Um, you can invite people to say um, a weekend session of Zoom or something like that, but engage with each other on the online chat function, talk to each other, ask people's hobbies, ask people's questions. 
And as soon as we're able to have you on campus, set up a meeting, like a catch up, set up a, an, uh, a session where you guys can, and girls can get together, have a coffee, talk to one another about the units that you're studying and what you hope to achieve after the university. Um, another great way is through our events. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a lot of events happening through the online function model. Um, but once you commence on campus study, um, there's a number of different events that get the community together. Um, and whether or not it's you with your classmates, you with your, your friends that um, you're from the same country, from the same town, um, anything like that. It's, it's really important that with the short time that you're here at the university or you're on campus, you're engaging with other people, you're talking, you're getting outside of your comfort zone and you're really experiencing what the university has to offer. If you just restrict yourself to, I'm here to study and that's all I'm gonna get out of it, that's great. But remember, when you're in the workforce, when you're outside of university, when you're outside of school, the only and the best way to get yourself noticed ahead in your job or anything like that is through engagement. If you don't engage, if you don't put yourself out there, you come restricted, you, you come into a bubble of your own and you won't have outside influences being able to kind of help you along and support you. So please, again, put yourself out there, ask questions. Um, if you're not sure, put up your hand, get the support that you need. Like I said, it's a short duration, three to four years undergraduate program, two years master's program, and then it's done and then you're back into the workforce or you're back home. So make the most of it. Really enjoy your time here because we've set up a lot of different avenues for international students to really engage and um, get a sense of what University like of Tasmania has to offer for you and the community that you're about to engage into. Well, Carl Lutas from UTAS, you have done a fantastic job today. I'm going to send uh, end our session here. We do have a couple of questions here and there, but they would be more suited to answer privately as they're more personal questions. Um, so thank you so much, Kyle, for your session today. Uh, just some housekeeping. So we will respond back to your questions as soon as possible. Copies of all this presentation and webinar will be available on our landing page where you use to register your interest to attend these sessions. Our next session is starting in 15 minutes at 2.15 p.m. So in 15 minutes, we're gonna have um, Jacob Workman as myself and myself speak about accommodation. So if anyone is interested to join that session, please feel free to join using the same link that you use to join this session. Thank you so much, Kyle, and we'll end it there. Thanks very much, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you here. Thank you.